Hi, it's Skitty Vonstadi, CEO of OneWire, and welcome to Open Door. Today, we're going to go interview my very good friend, Jeffrey Leeds, who's the CEO and founder of Leeds Equity Partners, a private equity shop that focuses on the education space. Jeffrey is a great guy, a great pal. Uh, I think you'll really enjoy the show. So let's go knock on his door. I'm here today with my good friend, Jeffrey Leeds, CEO of Leeds Equity Partners. Jeffrey, thank you very much for having me over. Tell us a little bit about what you guys do here. Uh, Leeds Equity Partners is a private equity firm, which means that we are in the business of making investments in and generally acquiring uh, all of uh, companies. And we do that in the world of education, training, information, what we pompously call knowledge industries. How did you get from college to where you are today? I know it's been a long journey. It's been a long journey and characterized by lots of uh, wrong turns, uh -huh. uh, but happily wrong turns that ended up uh, taking me to a place that uh, I find uh, pleasing. Uh, I finished college and uh, immediately went off to uh, graduate school. I spent two years in England studying history. And then after working uh, in a couple of different jobs as a lawyer, found myself at age 30 finishing up a clerkship with a federal judge having to figure out what I was going to do uh, with my life professionally. Uh, and so at the age 30, met a uh, friend who suggested I work for a father who owned an investment bank. And this wrong turn led to my uh, career in finance. Got you. So that was your uh, beginning at Lazard. That's right. Going from Lazard to where you are today, starting up your own firm, that takes a lot of nerve and guts to do that. What, what drove you? The, the folly of youth. Uh, <laughs> I, I sometimes look back and think, would I have made that decision in my 40s? Uh, yeah. And would I have made that decision as a young husband and a father of young children? The answer is probably not. Yeah. Uh, at the age of 35 or so, uh, hubris of, uh, of youth, I thought, you know, this is fun. And maybe I can do it a little bit better, have a little bit more fun, make a little bit more money. And so I recruited one person from the firm and uh, borrowed someone's conference room. And the next thing I knew, uh, we were in business doing private equity. And tell us a little bit about your board. You got some very impressive people uh, that are working with you. We have a board of advisors that we've recruited over the course of 15 or 20 years. It's currently chaired by uh, General Colin Powell. How the heck did you ever get uh, Colin Powell? Uh, the short answer, and I think it's uh, a good lesson to learn, is that we asked. Mm -hmm. When we first surfaced the idea of the general serving as our chairperson, we didn't know him. Everyone said, well, that's a great idea. Why don't you ask Santa Claus and see if he'll deliver him in a stocking? Uh, he says no to everybody. And the more we thought about it, the more we thought he probably doesn't say no to everybody. He probably isn't asked by everybody. So the first thing we did was figure out how to get to him responsibly through someone that he respected so that at the very least we could pose the question. And we did. We had thought through what we really wanted uh, to do uh, with him, how he, we thought he could, might add value, and what a relationship might look like, both for us and, and for him. And after six months or nine months of due diligence on his part of, of us, he said yes. When you look at people and their success, what do you think the common link is? What's, what's the DNA that everybody shares in common? Well, first of all, I think... There are a lot of ways to be successful, a lot of different traits that can lead you to a great career. There are people who are just extraordinarily uh, intellectually gifted. Uh, there are people who are enormously creative. Uh, there are people who outwork everybody else. They may not have quite the aptitude, but I think what people share is a drive and a need to be successful, a competitive streak. Listen, you and I have done a lot of work in the past together uh, with one wire. What, what are you looking for? What's going to set somebody apart that is going to make you want to hire them? It's an intangible always. I mean, the, the easy part is to see uh, the history of success. Mm -hmm. uh, great grades in college, captaining the sports teams, uh, being an accomplished musician. Whenever you're hiring uh, for a job uh, or for a firm, you need to make sure the fit is right. You have to love what we do. Mm -hmm. Uh, the people who are successful here, people who are successful in most private equity firms or in any 
initiative tend to have a real exuberance and uh, interest and excitement for the work they do. You couldn't put in the hours doing the work you do here or training to be a professional athlete or a singer uh, right. if you didn't love the work. And that's hard for young people sometimes to know. Are you really going to love 3 o'clock in the morning looking at a spreadsheet, a flickering computer screen? The answer is, yeah, that's what's going to make your work extraordinary. And Jeffrey, tell me what else is important in terms of managing a business. Well, one of the things that maybe is a little bit surprising because it's uh, diametrically opposed to some traits that lead to success, I think, is that while you always have to be confident and believe passionately in what you're doing and know that you'll succeed, mm -hmm. you have to be afraid that you won't. You have to be incredibly humble all the time about what you don't know, about what could go wrong, about the competition and how much harder they may be working. One of the things we always say here, mm -hmm. we're not as smart as our best deal, and we're not as stupid as our worst deal. Right. And you got to always remember how much luck helps you out and how much a lack of luck sometimes can hurt you. But always having a sense that failure can be around the corner uh, makes you more likely to avoid running into that. I remember shortly after I started my firm, I ran into Michel David Vey, who was the owner and then uh, the CEO of Lazard Frere, a great Frenchman. And he said to me, how are you doing? And I said, I'm doing uh, really well, except that every day I feel like there's a guy on my shoulder, a little guy, saying, hey, this is easy. You're doing great. <laughs> and there's another guy on the other shoulder saying, you're about to absolutely fail and be destitute and humiliated. And I said, I don't know which of these guys you know, is real. And he said, I don't know, Jeff Lee, but I've had those same two guys on my shoulders for 50 years. <laughs> and it's Love true. It. You yeah. have to have both the confidence and conviction and, the, and, and massive doses of humility. Right, right. I hear you loud and clear. Any other advice you'd like to give the young folks out there? The, the world of commerce, the professional world, uh, will get harder and harder. It, it will, uh, the world is getting increasingly competitive. Uh, domestically, it's more competitive. Uh, as President Obama said recently to a group of kids that he was talking to, while you're listening to me, elsewhere, other people are working hard. The danger is to become narrow and to focus only on work. And in our view, in our experience here, that doesn't make you better at your work. It just makes you work longer. Uh, have interests, have passions, uh, become an interesting person who knows things and not just how a balance sheet or a P&L works. Be engaged in the world. Hey, Jeffrey, thank you very much. My pleasure. Jeffrey Lee, CEO of Lee's Equity Partners. Thanks so much. Thank you, Scooter.